Uh, good evening. I'm Carl Valenti, the town manager, and what I discussed with Andy earlier is we'll go through each of the articles in order and um, stop after each article if there's any questions. Um, there are board and committee members here who can answer questions. Uh, there's town staff here who can answer questions as well. Uh, so starting off, and we are with special town meeting number two is the one we're working off of. So article number two is to amend the Minuteman Regional High School Agreement. Uh, this was inserted at the request of the town of Wayland. Uh, this past year at their annual town meeting, they voted to withdraw from the Minuteman Regional School District, um, largely because they only have two students attending Minuteman. Um, and at the moment, they would prefer not to be part of the school if Minuteman goes um, ahead with their um, proposed new capital project to build a new high school. Um, we hope to have somebody from the Board of Selectmen here on Monday night who can speak on behalf of the town of Wayland. Um, under the regional agreement with Minuteman High School, um, to withdraw from the district requires the consent of all 16 towns who are members of Minuteman. And we're the first community to have it come um, on a, before a special town meeting. Any questions on that article? Uh, yes. Um, I don't have, the question was, what's the assessment look like to Whale and given they only have two students? Um, I don't have that table with me. Um, on average, the assessments are somewhere around uh, between eighteen and $24,000 per student, depending on whether it's a special education student or not. And if the capital project went forward, Wayland's assessment for the capital project would be about $37,000 a year for the each year for the 30 year period. Yes. So, so the question is, is there any benefit to um, Lexington by allowing Wayland to withdraw? Um, the discussion that the Board of Selectmen had on this matter is um, they did not see any benefit to it. Um, there was a concern among some of the board members that if Whalen was to withdraw, the other remaining 15 towns would have to pick up their portion of the pension liability and the other post-employment benefit liability. Um, it also makes it a little bit more complicated moving forward with the capital project because Wayland's withdrawal, if the other 15 communities agreed, wouldn't take place until 2017, um, the way the regional agreement. So I think the short answer to your question is there does not appear to be any benefit either to Lexington or the remaining member communities. David. Uh, David Kaufman, Precinct 6. Uh, do we have an estimate as to what the actual costs that would be transferred to Lexington if they were permitted to withdraw might be? Um, so um, we don't have that cost in terms of the operating budget. Um, and the capital budget, again, their portion is $37,000, which would be spread among the remaining 15 communities, so it's a relatively modest amount if they stayed at two students. And actually, I'll, let me correct myself, David. Um, that $37,000 is based on five students. Um, the agreement calls for a five, you pay a five student minimum. So whether they have two students or five students, it would continue at $37,000. Carl? David? 
And I believe, as you just said, if they aren't able to leave until 2017, because after the town votes, it has to go to the state education, secondary education to approve it also. So that's why the 2017 is there. And if the debt process has proceeded on prior to them actually being released, they're still responsible, correct, for the debt that was in, uh, created at the time they were still with us? Yes, any debt that was authorized while they're still a member, they're responsible for that until that debt is paid off. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, article number three. Uh, this article asks town meeting to approve the transfer of property to Lexhab, our housing organization. Um, the property is 20,000 square feet of land at the former Booza Farm, which was purchased by the town about five years ago. Um, the selectmen have asked Lexhab to build two structures on this 20,000 square feet. Uh, each structure will have three affordable units. Town meeting, uh, I'm sorry, state law requires a vote of town meeting to transfer property from one town entity to another. And we have a slide just showing you. So um, this is the entire Booze a farm property that the town purchased again about five years ago. Um, this is Lowell, Lowell Avenue, uh, Lowell Street, excuse me. Um, and so the 20,000 square feet is right there in the circled area. And that's the parcel that would be transferred to Lexhab. Um, and that requires a two thirds vote of town meeting. Gloria? Um, yes, the question was when we purchased the property was the intent to use some of it for affordable housing and it was some of the CPC, CPA funds were allocated for affordable housing purposes. Um, the rest of it was for open space which is being operated by Lex Farm. The remaining about seven acres or so is being operated by Lex Farm um, and that was done by a different source of CPA funding. So the short answer to your question is yes. All right. Article four is to appropriate for water system improvements. This is to replace a 100-year water main in Mass Avenue between Pleasant Street and Merritt Road, and also including a portion of that same water main that is at the intersection of Mass Avenue and Woburn Street. The estimated cost of this project is $2.5 million. The funding would be $2.1 million from debt that would be repaid by the Water Enterprise Fund and the remaining $400,000 from Water Enterprise Fund retained earnings. Good. All right. Um, article number five, uh, which is to appropriate for property improvements 241 Grove Street. This is the Wright Farm in Marilyn Fenelosa, the chairman of the Community Preservation Committee, is going to speak first on this. And then um, Bob Burbage from Lexhab. Hi, everybody. Uh, in just a little bit of history, in 2012, we had the opportunity to buy the Wright Farm, a 13.6 acre parcel land on Grove Street. Um, the, Wright, the Wright family at the time 
retained the house that was on the property, but gave us a right of first refusal to buy the remaining property uh, when all of the owners lapsed. Um, and the last, the last surviving owner lapsed last spring. We were able to purchase the, the remaining uh, 90, 0.99, almost an acre of land. And at the time, it was very clear that we were going to, we were going to preserve the farmhouse as affordable housing, to convert it into affordable housing. When we purchased the land last spring, originally it was our intention to provide for um, rehabilitation funds at that time. We decided to wait uh, until the fall when they were, had a better sense of what their expenses would be, but that we would do it in the fall as an exception to our normal policy that we, that we don't do CPA projects in the fall. This was deemed to be a special case, and that's why you're seeing it before you now. Uh, the amount is $200,000, and Bob will tell you how he plans to spend the money. Is it the barn for the conservation? Uh, as you can see, we're hoping to uh, have $200,000 uh, for renovations of the Wright Farm. Uh, it is our intention to um, to create a three-bedroom home. Uh, we will treat it as a three-bedroom home. And as far as housing stock goes in the Lexad community, a three-bedroom home is something that is, is a real premium for us. A lot of our units are one and two bedroom. A three-bedroom um, home gives us the opportunity to put a family in there with mixed-gendered children, uh, which is, uh, is, as I said, is something that is, is sorely needed. Um, it was unanimously recommended by the uh, Community Preservation Committee to do this. Um, and so I think in the next slide we'll show what the, um, how it breaks down. I have uh, Bill Kennedy who's here with me who frankly has a, a better idea of how these, how these funds are allocated. So we should, rather than go through it line item by line item, if anyone has any questions regarding the specifics of the 200,000 that we're, we're asking for, um, Bill will answer your questions. Uh, we, uh, uh, every project that we uh, do, new, new construction renovation, we try to use Minuteman students. Uh, it will, of course, depend upon uh, workload at the time, but uh, we're, we're going forward with this, this project. Uh, we will go forward with this project with the intent of utilizing uh, the donated labor of the Minuteman school. Especially given that there's a lot of this is renovation that seems to play well into what the students can do. Uh, it is a four-bedroom house, but we'll most likely use it as a three-bedroom. Bob, thanks. Bill, thanks. Good to see you. Good to see you. So since this is moving along so quickly, I'm going to go back to an article and just clarify an answer I gave to Gloria Bloom about the um, Booza Farm parcel when we purchased that. Um, when town meeting approved, the motion allowed it to be used for any of the options. Um, it said, you know, can be used for affordable housing and or recreation and or um, open space, so it covered all of them. And it was then after a subsequent committee of the Board of Selectmen that the decision was made that it would be a combination of a portion of the land for farming purposes and then about a half an acre for the, the housing purpose. So thanks, Marilyn, for clarifying that for me. Uh, Article 6, uh, this is a request for uh, $20,000 for a fire station site su study. This will be funded from the tax levy. And this will allow the town to do two things, to continue to study the existing fire station site for either a new or renovated station, 
It will also uh, allow us to study other sites that are not currently owned by the town, but that we'd like to consider as a possible fire station site. And tonight, uh, here is Assistant Fire Chief John Fleck, who's just going to speak briefly about some of the challenges in our existing station. So, Chief Fleck. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, as you see in your notes here, the chief has summarized some of the conditions that we have down at the fire station and is indeed a 70-year-old building. It served the purpose well for, for many years, but here we are today. We're kind of busting at the seams down there. Uh, we don't have the room to do the proper training. The building itself has been undergoing some significant renovations over those 70 years. Our most recent renovation was the shoring up of the floor. The station floor was beginning to fail with the concrete, so we had to shore it up where we park our fire trucks. The fire trucks have gotten much, much larger over that 70 year period. Uh, the staff as well. Uh, we currently house the fire prevention trailer, which is temporary, going on its eighth anniversary out back. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have handicap, handicap access to the fire station or the fire prevention trailer. So our hope is that we can get this evaluated in a timely fashion and take a look at and see if we can get those needs met. Uh, our training facilities right now consists of the day room. Uh, we're, we're woefully low on the electronics portion. Much of our training now comes from online services. Uh, so the, the firefighters and personnel are actually trying to do some of this training in some of the cubby holes that we've kind of secured. Uh, the closet spaces that we have have been converted over to bathrooms, uh, storage facilities. Uh, we now have requirements to lock up our medications, so we've had to take these closets and turn them into storage capacities as well. So we'll hope to get through this. Any questions? Does the town own uh, a significant portion of the parking area in back of that between the fire station itself and the Minuteman bikeway? Uh, or, or is that associated with the uh, medical building and so on? I understand we do, we do have the parking spaces directly behind the station, and then you have that green area. The parking, I believe, you're referring to is not owned by the town. So um, you're absolutely correct. We have to be within a certain geographical location um, for, the lo for a fire station for response times. Um, we're really not at a place where we can talk about possible sites um, because some of them involve privately owned property and um, it could impact our ability to negotiate to purchase those properties. Steve Heinrich, Precinct 3. Um, we did a number of studies on the fire station. I remember one within the last few years that, that we did. Um, and I would, I would hope that at the, at the town meeting we might have the answers to the following questions. And it's probably not appropriate to ask for the answers right now, but I would like to know there's the, the area behind Camellia Place um, near the fire station. There's a fair amount of land there, and I believe it, uh, you just answered that it is not all owned by the town. But 
the actual location of the fire current fire station is probably as good a location as we have available to us. So it would be nice to know if there are possibilities of, of, of acquiring some additional land there to be able to provide the kind of station that you need for a town this size, which clearly the current station does not meet those requirements. I don't think any of us think it does. Um, the other thing is if, you know, I, I don't want to see a repeat <clears throat> of what happened at the DPW building of hundreds of uh, what seemed like endless studies going nowhere until we finally bit the bullet and made a major decision to, to redo the DPW building, and thank, thank goodness we did. Um, so it would be nice to know more about some of the other options, even if, it, as much as you can convey at, that, at this point, because <clears throat> I do agree, and I think many of the town meeting members agree, that the fire station is a serious concern and we would like, I would like not to study it indefinitely. I would like to basically be able to come up with a recommendation that we could act on in the future. I mean, I hate to spend money, 20,000 isn't much, but I hate to spend a lot of money on studies just to do another study. So I don't know if any of that information can be brought to town meeting to answer those questions next week, but whatever information we have would be helpful to us, and you know, because probably we're going to, we're I, probably we're going to vote to spend the twenty thousand dollars, but I'd sure like to understand the problem a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, at the town meeting. So let me let me give a partial response uh, to that question. Um, it, by, on Monday, it would be very difficult to talk about other possible sites. But what I would add is the advice that was given to the selectmen by our two financial committees is that before we look towards spending money to buy sites we don't own, we have to be absolutely, we have to understand very clearly what the current site offers and what the shortcomings are. Um, Chief Wilson and Assistant Chief Fleck have pointed out to us that if we use that site, it's going to be their home for 50 years. And so we have to think about it in terms of the long term and will that site be sufficient for the next 50 years. So, so one aspect of this study is to spend some of the 20000 about a third of it, to really get at some of the questions you're raising about the current site um, we know this current site has some challenges because the Vine Brook runs under it, there's wetlands in the back there, and we have to um, be at least 50 feet from the wetlands in terms of the, the buffer. Um, but the board wants to take another look first at the existing site before they start considering other sites that aren't owned by the town. Uh, one more question. Uh, is there uh, the possibility that there could be sufficient space on the current site uh, if you uh, were allowed to build up rather than out? I, I mean, as long as there's enough space to put the engines on, obviously you don't want them on another floor, but uh, we uh, are we constrained by the historic district or something else? I mean, if it required a variance on the amount of height that you would be allowed to build, uh, is there a possibility that the current site could be uh, adjusted to do something with that? Mm -hmm. um, that is one of the um, topics we're, we'll be asking the engineers to look at as, as you surmised. It is, it is in the historic district. It's where it ends there, but that building is included. So um, we'll have to go through our own regulations and requirements for a, a building in the HDC. Jane Paget, Precinct 6. I wondered if we had, in fact, tabled forever 
the idea of a combined public safety facility with fire and police together. And if, I mean, if, if all of these possibilities are going forward without that, then I guess that's off the table. I know there's some support on the Board of Selectmen for that proposal, but I don't know if it's enough to override whatever objections people have. So the question was, are, are the Board of Selectmen still considering um, the possibility of a joint public safety building, which would include both police and fire, because we also need to do something about our, our police station. Um, the short answer is yes. It requires um, a, a significant amount of land to do that, um, particularly for the, the related parking that's um, required. And that's the biggest challenge in considering a joint station is finding a parcel large enough that could accommodate both buildings and the related parking. John Himmel, Precinct 6. Um, on Monday, uh, will there be any presentation, short presentation, from the study that was done before? Because they actually came up with two schemes. They did quite a bit of uh, analysis of the existing site. They had spoken to the Historic District Commission and Conservation. It might be very helpful to have some overview of what that was. The two schemes that they came up with, one was a renovation, the other was new. Um, the new one looked like it might be made, uh, could be built possibly in two phases, which may be the topic of what's to be studied in this next uh, study. Um, but I think that would be helpful. Also, in that particular, uh, Donham and Sweeney was the firm that did the work uh, the last time around. And they were charged with three things. One was the police station, fire station, and a combined station. And they did, in that study, have some recommendations about whether a combined station was worthwhile or not. So that might be good to bring up. All right. Thank you, John. So moving on to Article 7, this is the financial article making some budget adjustments. So um, here are the four, four adjustments to the operating budget that are being requested. Um, the first is to increase our temporary borrowing um, line by about $480,000 for the purchase of a new fire station. Um, I'm sorry, I wish it was a new fire station, new fire engine. Um, we, um, we had some difficulty with a previous engine we owned. Um, we were able to get return it and um, uh, get our money back for purchasing that we purchased for that. That, that then, that payment back to us went into our free cash for this year. So it became part of our certified free cash. So now we'd like to just take it out of the free cash and pay for the new engine that was delivered about two weeks ago and we hope to have it in front of Kerry Hall um, on Monday night for you to see. Um, so there will be no other debt issued. We just retire the temporary note that we issued to, when we took delivery of that engine. Um, second is to increase the public facilities budget by about $179,000. Um, there are certain mandated costs we have to pay as part of our electrical, um, electricity invoicing um, that are determined by the state. Um, they help fund um, energy conservation programs and um, new generating stations and so forth. So it's something completely out of our control, but that amount is changes from year to year. And when we established the budget um, last, uh, last winter, when we were building the budget, we didn't have that figure at that time. Um, so we've since received it, and, and it'll add about $179,000 to our electric budget. 
Our third is uh, for public works expenses, adding $10,000 to do some um, design and engineering work for the sidewalk at the library. This is largely the sidewalk that's on, not on the front of the library, not on the Mass Avenue, but on the other three sides, if any of you can visualize that. We've had um, just a severe deterioration of that sidewalk, um, and we're spending a fair amount of money repatching it. Um, so what we'd like to do is spec out a replacement of that sidewalk, and then in the spring at the annual town meeting, request of town meeting funding uh, for the construction of that sidewalk. And then lastly, um, to add $6,000 to our celebrations committee expense budget, um, we're looking to uh, purchase a portable stage that we would use not only on Patriots Day, but any other um, events, either in the center um, or at other locations. Um, and um, we did have, we almost had enough funds to purchase it um, out of uh, last year's appropriation, but when we had to add a handicapped accessible ramp to it, that pushed us over the top. So um, the additional $6,000 will allow us to purchase the portable stage, including a handicapped accessible ramp. Uh, so it's a total of approximately $675,000, um, and this will come out of available um, revenues. Um, the first amount will come out of our free cash, the other amounts out of just available revenues that we have as part of uh, the balancing the fiscal 16 budget. Any questions on any of those before I talk about the enterprise funds? Good. Um, so also part of Article 7 is to amend the enterprise fund budget. Three changes here, um, mostly going in the right direction, uh, reducing debt service for the water enterprise fund. Uh, and then for the sewer enterprise fund, um, an increase in debt service of 100, about 120,000 and a decrease in our MWRA assessment of about $71,000. And these were the figures that were used when the Board of Selectmen set water and sewer rates for this current year, fiscal 16. Um, Article 8, this is largely a housekeeping request of town meeting. Um, it's to appropriate money into some of our, three of our specified stabilization funds. Um, you can see the amounts on the screen, small amounts going into both the Transportation Demand Management Stabilization Fund and the Traffic Mitigation Stabilization Fund. Those two are from, uh, part of that money is from Cubist. Uh, Cubis has been making a payment to us every year and had to make a supplemental payment um, to us because we increased their payment by the cost of uh, living, the CPI index. Um, and then part of it is from the uh, Inn at Hastings Park, which also was required to make a $1,000 payment uh, to the Transportation Demand Management Stabilization Fund. So taking those receipts that we've already received and putting them in the right stabilization fund. And then the last amount, $87,000 uh, to the Transportation Management Overlay District Stabilization Fund. So this is um, actually exciting to report on. Um, a number of years ago, I believe now probably six years ago, Town meeting approved a change in the zoning for Hartwell Avenue to allow for further density on Hartwell Avenue. And as part of that zoning, you approved the creation of a transportation management overlay district. Um, basically, any new development on Hartwell Avenue, so new development meaning a dish, new square footage, um, the developer has the option of paying $5 a square foot 
that will go into a stabilization federal reserve account and then can be used for some of the infrastructure improvements that we have in the works actually for Hartwell Avenue. So we have our first new development on Hartwell Avenue, I want to say in 40 years. Um, it's King Street property, it's at the far end sort of towards the base on the right side. Um, they bought the property a few years ago. It's a, currently it's a three building campus. Um, they're adding a fourth building onto it. The, uh, the groundbreaking was this week. Um, the selectmen uh, were in attendance at that. Um, and so this is terribly exciting for us to see now the results of the work the planning board did a number of years ago to really um, encourage some development on Hartwell Avenue. Um, our very rough estimates is that when this building is constructed, it's going to add in excess of $500,000 in tax base, a new tax levy uh, to the town. Any questions on that? Chairman of the Planning Board is here if you want to give an attaboy for the work <laughs> five years ago, because that really made a, a huge difference in us marketing Hartwell Avenue. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Article 9, um, to um, appropriate for authorized capital improvements, um, we have no amendments to our capital projects they've previously approved, so this article will be indefinitely postponed. Article 10, to appropriate from prior year bills. Um, this past summer, um, we received a bill from Siemens Industry. Um, they do our street light repairs um, for work they had done in last fiscal year. Um, so under state law, if we receive an invoice after the close of the fiscal year, we have to bring it to town meeting for your approval to pay that bill. Um, we're not looking for any additional funds that will be paid out of the current year fiscal 16 budget. Um, and under state law, a nine-tenths vote of town meeting is required. No questions? Any questions? So it has nothing to do with the Patriots game starting at 8.30, <laughs> is it? I just want to check. Yeah. Oh, um, it's a good question. So the question was, if there's no benefit to the town of allowing Wayland to withdraw, why is it on the warrant? Um, under the regional agreement for Minuteman, any community that t their town meeting votes to withdraw, the remaining 15 towns are required to put it on their next special town meeting or annual town meeting warrant. So the selectmen were required to put it on the warrant. Thank you for asking that question. Well, I think that's it, folks. Carl, thanks ever so much. Marilyn, thanks. I want to thank all the town staff for coming. Glad we're getting you out efficiently. Uh, as somebody pointed out in the TMMA warrant information reports, sorry about the mess up on the index. Something happened in transmission to Wales, but I'm sure you'll find the write-ups. Thanks for coming, folks. See you Monday uh, in Baton Hall. <laughs>